What is up, everybody? Alex106 here. Thanks for tuning in. Today, we're going to talk about the ES9 from Expert Sleepers, and I'm just going to give some tips on configuration. So, um, just try to demystify it a little bit. When I got this thing, um, there were some things that I could have, you know, just... It would have been nice to know when I got it. Um, and so we're going to go through some of the things that I think are very helpful. We're going to go through some of the basics of the configuration tool. So when you look at the configuration tool, it can be super intimidating. There's tons of sliders, tons of faders. And I'm just going to you know, show you a little bit about that, what, um, how my setup works and try to explain some of the things. So one thing to understand, this is for the hosted slot. This is for using with a DAW. I am going to be using Bitwig. You can do this with pretty much any DAW. The reason I'm using Bitwig and not using this as a standalone mixer is that I want all my inputs to be inputs and I don't want to waste anything on effects. And so that's why I'm using Bitwig is because all of my effects happen in the DAW. So that way my voices and stuff can happen in here in the modular and then I could have some delay sends and reverb sends and not have to have those taking up module space or precious inputs. As you can see, I have all 14 of my inputs um, drawn up or you know filled up and then I'm only using two of the outputs. I do plan to use more eventually, but right now I'm only using two, not including the main out and the headphones. So. Let's dive in to the first tip, which is going to be know what your outputs are. So that's gonna be very helpful. So if we go over to the Bitwig side and we just go into settings, you'll see here that I have it set up. It's kind of a little jumbled because I've, I've did this like um, really quickly and I haven't renamed everything again. Um, but you can see that basically the inputs are listed one through 14 here. So when you're setting something up in your DAW, if you want it to be a stereo channel, you're going to have to designate that in the DAW. As you can see, I have stereo in one here, that's channel three and four. Stereo in two, that's channel seven and eight. So I did that all in the DAW. That's not touching the configuration tool at all. This is just how it's gonna work right out of the box. It's gonna be one through 14. Now on the outputs, there's something that's very helpful to know about. And that's that your quarter inch outputs, these are going to be outputs number one and two, right? So that's your master outputs. I have that set to speakers here. And then your secondary, your headphone output, that's going to be outputs three and four on the module. So if you want to send something to them separately, that's going to be outputs three and four. And then when you get into the, um, the other ones, those are actually going to start, they're labeled 1 through 8, but those start at 9 through 16. So that's super, that can be kind of confusing, and I thought that was super helpful when I figured that out, just to know that and get that in your brain. So as you can see here, I have mono out 1, mono out 2. This is my clock and reset that I'm using it for, but if because it's set to 15 and 16 here in Bitwig, that is going out of channels seven and eight. And the reason I'm using seven and eight is just because they're at the bottom, they're out of the way. Probably should use one and two because then it would just go over this easier. I literally just thought of that now. So, you know, we do things that are kind of weird sometimes. But that's basically the first tip. So again, outputs one and two, these are one and two. Your headphones are three and four. I believe the eight at is five and six. I don't know where seven and eight goes. I don't think that there actually is a seven and eight. Um, output. I think that that's just wasted space. And then they decided to go one through eight, nine, six, nine through 16, just so it's very simple and easy to understand. And then, as I said, if we go into here, if you do a stereo channel, it's going to match up with one and two, three and four, and so on. All right. So the next tip is some configuration tool basics. So the first thing I do recommend doing is downloading the configuration tool and not just using the one on, that's hosted online. Um, it is just nice to have it and it seems like it works really well as far as saving things goes. Um, not that the other one doesn't, but it's nice to just have it so you don't have to go find it every time, like in your web browser. Um, so here we go. The first thing I wanna talk about is DC blocking. So this is inputs, right? I actually have it all on here because I just loaded the standalone 
um, or sorry, not standalone, but the suitable for uh, hosted. I just set reset to defaults for that so I could show what's going on. So it's going to come like this. DC, DC blocking means um, we're going to be like it's AC coupled. It's not DC coupled. So DC blocking means it's blocking DC signals, meaning it's basically a filter that is cutting out super low frequencies. So if you just have a DC offset, let's say, just like an offset of voltage going into here, this is going to cut that out. So I have it on all of mine. I have it on turned on for all of them. Now that I think about it, I have it turned on on purpose. I do want DC blocking on on all of my inputs because I'm using these for audio only. Every single one of these is audio. If you were going to go into here and use something like the grid, for instance, so if we went into here and we did Bitwig's grid and we opened up something and we decided to do a CV input on something, we want to do a volt per octave or we wanted to track, that's where we're really going to need to go back into this config tool and turn off DC blocking because now we can actually use that. So if you're trying to use CV inputs and it's not working very well, you want to turn DC blocking off. But because I'm not using any CV imp these add CV inputs I'm just using as audio, I'm going to leave DC blocking on for all of those. Okay, so the next one is going to be setting up your headphone output. So if you go into the, if you, if you look at my system here, basically I've got the master output set to speakers. And then if I go into my audio devices, I can say, I can, or my audio settings, I can distinguish what is going to be my headphone output, right? So my headphones is going to be three and four. And so Bitwig automatically will send anything like your, your clock, or sorry, your metronome, or anything like a Q mix to that. So what's nice is if I go to solo as Q, now when I hit these Q buttons, this is what I'm going to hear in my headphones, regardless of if the faders are up. And that's a really nice feature. And another cool thing about Bitwig here is that it has its own way of controlling your cue mix. So you can have it be just your master, or you can have it be just the cue, or you can have a little bit of cue mix. So that's a really nice feature of Bitwig. And the reason I'm talking about that is if we go into the configurator here, you'll see if we dive down into the macro mix here, this is where we want to go next. So outputs one and two is USB one and two, right? So that's, this is the mix out. These are our quarter inch outputs here. And we're basically saying that the output of the DAW one and two is going to go into the main outputs and nothing else. So no other sub mix, um, and no other output on the, um, on the, Bitwig or whatever DAW output side. But now you can see that if I go to outputs three and four, which are my headphones, I've got this set up where you can hear now one and two and three and four. Well, I don't want that. I only want to hear what's coming out of three and four. So I'm just going to turn down one and two. And now I have this Q mix. This is separate. So everything is separate on this um, headphone output. And now when I go into my Q mix settings, this is actually going to work. This is going to tell me like how much master versus how much Q I'm actually listening to. And so that is um, super helpful. And the last thing I wanted to say is that basically if you go into here, all the outputs are already DC coupled. So if you're going to use these as CV outs with CV tools or any sort of um, CV device in Bitwig, CV tools in Ableton, any sort of expert sleepers plugin, um, silent way, obviously any of those things, these are all, all the outputs are already um, DC coupled. So you don't have to worry about those working with modular as control signals. So you don't have to change anything in here. So that's basically it. Everything else in here is extra. 
And I'm not going to get into this stuff because this is what I use and this is how I use it. And this is all the stuff that I ever change in the configuration tool. So I think a lot of people think that it's a lot more complicated than it is because it has so many options. Um, but when you're using it in a relatively basic way, you don't have to change much. Um, and that's a good example. So I hope that helps. I know we didn't listen to any music. Um, I'll jam us out. But thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you all next time. Peace out.